It's time for an inside look at the most powerful motorsport on the planet. WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. This is WFO Radio. Hey, everybody. WFO Radio is back. My name is Joe Costello, and we have got a very special show for you today. That's right. Big Daddy Don Garlett's going to join us on this program. We're going to talk about the 2023 International Drag Racing Hall of Fame inductees. We're talking about Shelly Anderson. We're talking about Bob Fry. We're talking about John Force and many others. Of course, the Knapp family of English Town fame. And we're going to get into it with Big Daddy. If you're a fan of drag racing, if you understand that Garlitz is the ultimate legend and you want to get the word out about the Hall of Fame, we encourage you to share this show. We want to hear what you have to say in the comment section right down there and let us know. And just so you know, WFO has a table. We're going to be there. Of course, I'm the event MC, and we're going to give a couple of our listeners an opportunity to witness the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame in person. So you got to keep checking out WFO so we tell you exactly how to do it. But before we go too far, we're going to bring him on right away. The ultimate legend from the world of drag racing. Here he is, Big Daddy. Don, good morning. How are you? I'm just fine. You know, at my age, waking up in the morning is all you got to do. <laughs> no, it is. And in the drag racing world, we've had some terrible situations recently, lost some racers. And so that's at the forefront of our mind. It is amazing how have you been able to keep going. And this Hall of Fame is a high point of the start of every season. This one is going to be great. John Force, my goodness. And I see a lot of people are commenting out there on the various social media, which is tremendous. You can see that Don is frozen. The internet, of course, work tremendously. Uh, in our pre-race test, but now he's back. Hello, Don. You were frozen, but now you are back. Thank you. Thank you so much for being there. I, I, I appreciate being on the show. So let's talk about these inductees. This is part of the start of every new NHRA season. We're starting at the Gator Nationals this year, and we're going to have a big event the Thursday before. These people, contemporaries, great personalities, Shelly Anderson Payne, a driver, a multi-generational racer. Her father raced, her children raced, and she was also a media personality that did a great job for the sport of drag racing. I'm super excited about Shelly. Yeah, it's a great, uh, great candidate for the Hall of Fame, and I'm surprised that they didn't put her in sooner. But, uh, you know, they, there's so many people out there that are deserving. It's just hard for the selectors to get six of them or seven of them. We, it varies, you know, from year to year. It's so hard to sing, single them down to that. So it's, you know, if you, if you make the cut, you've really done something. Absolutely. Now we'll, we'll get to John force, but this year there is a waiting list to get tickets. I think that's part of it. I, I love Bob Fry. I'm there to see Fry. I'm there to see the Knapp family. But John Force only goes into the hall one time, and I think everybody is very excited about that. <laughs> yeah, he he could do the show by himself if he wanted to. He could get up there and talk for the whole two hours and never say the same word twice. He definitely was a as a TV personality, and uh, we're so pr you know we would have put him in years ago, but he, he said no, 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 I don't want to go in there. My sponsors will think I'm retiring, and. Uh, so finally, I, every year we call them up. Well, can we put you in this year, John? And, and the last time they said, yeah, that, you know, I'm ready to go in. So maybe he is really getting ready to retire. I personally think he should before something happens to him. You know, those cars are really tough to drive. And they, you know, it takes a lot to do that. And there can be no mistakes, zero mistakes. And, uh, as you get up into the years, you know, you, you just ain't as good as you used to be. It's just as simple as that. I mean, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of, you know, it, it be, but we're talking about a job driving a funny car is just be like an astronaut as far as I'm concerned. 
Yes, or fighter pilot, amazing. And uh, John has defied logic over the years, winning races in each season. Uh, we'll talk more about him a little later, but let's talk about Ron Atterbury. Speaking of nemesis, Ron was building cars for one of your great on-track nemesis. Yeah, he um, he built the Shirley Muldowney car that uh, was in the movie Heart Like a Wheel. And uh, we gathered that car up at 20th Century Fox when they were cleaning up the lot. They were going to scrap a lot of stuff. And somebody was over there that, that knew me and said, you know, this thing belongs in a museum. Not only is it a Shirley Muldowney car that won the world championship, but it was also in the movie. So we, I just happened to be in Los Angeles and Sonny Messner and I jumped in the truck and went over to 20th Century Fox and picked up the stuff, piled it on the top of the trailer. This was before the great big trailers, you know, and uh, tied it on the top of the trailer and brought it home and put it all back together. And, you know, it's a really, a, it's a super find. And, you know, you can look in the museum. We have a, a kind of a terrazzo type paint on the floor. It's called Torganol. And in front of the Shirley Muldowney booth, it's wore right to the concrete. That tells you which cars the people really like. Absolutely. And of course, Shirley, an icon unto herself and has been there the past couple of years, had some fun. Uh, but Ron, not just Shirley, right? She won the championship uh, with the first car she had of his, from what I understand. But Gary Beck and many others uh, appreciated his chassis building skills in the late 70s and early 1980s. a good chassis builder and uh, he was one of the greats he built some fine automobiles and they were safe and he was a really a nut about safety he uh, wanted the cages to be just right it, it, it would have been my guess if shirley's car had been in atterbury when she had the accident in montreal she probably wouldn't have got hurt near as bad next up bunny burkett this is one that Bunny and the boys, you think about uh, Gary Pritchett, you think about Lamont over there at Salinas's team. There are so many Bunny Burkett disciples through drag racing that got the passion working with Bunny. Uh, we lost her in 2020. Terrible. Carol Bunny Burkett, though, going into the Hall of Fame here in 2023. Yeah, she was really a pioneer for women. I mean, she did a lot of great shows. She was she was so liked by the fans. And uh, she won a few races, too. She she was fast, had a nice car, and a good-looking lady, for sure. <laughs> but, you know, a little bit of trivia. She had a little dog that I just loved. And I have a picture of Bonnie, and she autographed it to me. And then a the dog put his little paw on an ink pad and put his signature on it, too. It's so cute. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that is uh, that is great. And of course, we miss uh, Bunny, but uh, I think the Capco boy is going to be in the house for the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame ceremony. And it's going to be emotional. But when those guys are in the house, it's also very, very fun. Now, this is the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame, which means our Australian brothers and sisters and all around the world are represented. Graham Cowan going to be part of it. And uh, they love drag racing down under as much as we love it here. Yeah, he's a, he's a great um, a great inductee. Uh, you know, he, he was a top racer, but he did so much for drag racing. He did, you know, he did actually more for drag racing in Australia than he did for his own racing. He he pioneered lots of stuff. They, 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 his whole life was wrapped around drag racing down there, and it wouldn't be the same in Australia if it hadn't been for him. He's a, He's a great inductee multiple series uh funny nitro funny car series just trying to keep it alive uh often at his own expense and my australian friends have given him a lot of credit for the success of drag racing and the way they have been able to keep it keep it going uh yeah, very well deserved yeah and i'm super excited to see these inductions and of course it'll be live streamed again this year which is a big deal ted jones and masters entertainment undertaking the live stream so fans we would prefer them go in person but if they can't they will be able to watch online yeah isn't that great be it and that's the whole the whole thing you can tune in just like you were sitting there in the show and see the whole thing from beginning to end and you know the the tv's okay but it's just such a small part of what actually happens at the banquet 
the live stream is so much better. Absolutely. It's well, it's it's all it's both. Um, and this is going to be the thing that everybody talks about. You gave us a little note at the start of the show that John has been delaying this moment. And I think it is great. Do you remember the first time or one of the early times that you met John Force? Oh, do I? On the AHRA circuit, he was just like me. He was driving his own tow truck. He had one guy helping him. We were in this motel parking lot, and he's parked right next to me. He didn't have a nickel to his name, and he was out there fighting that, that AHRA circuit. I mean, he was out there working under the car, working on it just like I was. You know, it's exactly the same thing. I have so much respect for John. I mean, he came from nothing and to be the win the world championship so many times and all the records and to still be out there hitting it like he is. It's just unbelievable. But uh, I don't care how much money he's got. It was the American way, and that's the way it should be. You work hard. You save your money. You plan your life. You do it right. And if you met, and only in America can you do that. And I just hate the fact that that woke group is trying to put all that down and, and say that that's not right. Yeah, it's uh, the old school ways are the ways. Work hard, dedication, and uh, and you will you will advance. You will advance if you put your nose to the grindstone. Uh, certainly. Now, force and only in America can you do that. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, we in drag racing, we have so many great examples of it. Right, people following their dreams, and then maybe they make some pretty good money along the way, which is uh, amazing. You don't have to choose, but Force evolved. He he worked hard at the beginning, but then he evolved. Of course, some key hires with Austin Coyle bringing his family in. You guys raced during your quasi comeback tour in the 1980s when you pulled the car off the museum floor and went out and won the nationals. That's when Force was like really emerging onto the big scene and through the eighties with the super shop car, that's when force was getting to the nineties where you called a lot of his race wins as part of the broadcast team. Was there anything that you, that surprised you about John over the years? Well, no, because he, he was such a hardworking guy. I mean, when I saw him in Ohio working on his own car, I, I figured that, you know, someday he'd make it because he was, Gonna, he had his nose to the grindstone, and he never gave up. And that's what it takes. I mean, a lot of people would not have put went through what John went through to be what he is today. He's a hardworking guy, and he's focused. And uh, that's what it takes, determination. And, uh, you know, gosh, I mean, uh, he is a, the epitome of the American dream in my my estimation. That is amazing. And I am just, I'm excited for all of it, but to see force on the stage in front of the audience at the international drag racing hall of fame, it's going to be amazing. And I don't know if he's going to be fun, comedic John force, which, you know, we love, or he's going to be like looking back on his career, John force. I don't know, but it's going to be very entertaining. Well, I tell you, the banquet ain't sold out for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned Sonny a little earlier. This is a guy that was your West Coast right-hand man. Talk a little bit about Sonny Mesner as he will be inducted into the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame. Well, that's one of the unsung heroes of drag racing. that Nobody hardly knows who it is. And the uh, that's what we try to do here. We try to reach out and get to, get to the people that really worked hard. Sonny has worked hard since he was 15 years old. He helped Junior Thompson build his first car. He made a replica, a complete replica, working replica of the car years later and gave it to Junior Thompson. He helped us at the Riverside Race when we won the Drag News Invitational there in 1961. And he's been with us ever since. He's found numerous cars for us all around the country, most especially in California. He's stored them out there. He's found parts. I mean, he's one of the unsung heroes of the Museum of Drag Racing. We've got a car stored out there right now, a 1954 Ford with the see-through hood that we purchased a number of years ago. 
and just haven't been able to get it transported back east. He's just one of those hardworking guys that loves the sport and done so much for it, and, and hardly anybody knows anything about it. But Steve Gibb knows who he is. He attends all those nostalgia meets. He has Swamp Rat 3, which he paid for the restoration of it. And he keeps the car out on the West Coast and so that we have someone out there to attend all the nostalgic cackle fests. And he just makes it just like having a representative of the museum in California he is and never received a nickel for any of it. He's just one of those guys that uh, loves drag racing, loves the museum. And I, I felt that he should be in and everybody else did too. And takes a great photo. By the way, look at that. That looks like something out of time life. That is, that is a great photo of Sonny. I can't wait to see him. This sport is really built on guys like Sonny who are doing it for the love and the passion. Maybe they're not drivers. Maybe they don't get to experience the thrill of speed, but they are hands on making it happen all throughout the sport of drag racing. That's exactly right. And uh, try to honor some of those people every year pick one out and that, we also have the founders award you know that that does that too that people would never get voted into the hall of fame but they've done so much for the sport absolutely innovation something that you have been on the cutting edge of since the very beginning innovation wasn't always race cars the knapp family Vinny and Richard Knapp, the Knapp family innovated drag strips, innovated junior dragsters, innovated customer service, innovated so much in the sport of drag racing through Raceway Park, English Town, New Jersey. They're going to be a raucous, fun bunch at the Hall of Fame down there. But uh, I think it's great to see the Knapp family, Vinny and Richard, get in. Yeah, I'm going to look forward to it. Also, meeting the children. I I was uh, personal friends with the two boys, and they, I mean, they did so much for drag racing, building that, that drag strip. It was just out in the woods in the day when I was young, you know, and there wasn't any houses around there, and then the urban sprawl just went all around it. Those real estate agents never showed a house during race day. It was always when it was nice and quiet, and then, of course, it finally got so many neighbors. It just got so tough for them to keep going. And uh, eventually, you know, they closed it up and made it into a, a big parking lot, a staging area for cars coming into the country. But what a loss it was for drag racing. You know that for many years, the English Town event was the biggest drag race in the world. I don't know whether you know that or not, but that it, it superseded Indy. And then finally, Gainesville uh, took over the number one spot from English Town. Of course, now ain't no telling what's going to happen to Gainesville now with it being the opener, season opener. It's, it's not to get so big you can't even hardly get into the place. But uh, it's, you know, it's uh, my favorite, my favorite track because uh, it, it's got such a long stopping area. Yes. Well, you had milestones at Gainesville and you bring up a great point about it being the first race of the season. I agree. It's going to be massive and hopefully people have gotten their tickets already because sellouts happen at Gainesville and you don't want to get locked out. Tell me about your first time at English Town. Being a Florida guy, you know they're building this super track up there, and uh, they put on shows during the week a lot. They did a lot up there in the Northeast. Give me some early E-Town memories. Well, English Town was a favorite Wednesday night stop. You know, we had all the races we could do on Saturday and Sunday, and so it was great to have a track that was open on Wednesday where we could get another race in in the middle of the week because in those days, you know, you didn't have to work on the car like you do today. We would uh, run those races uh, and never take the engine apart, run three or four races a week. And so English Town was a favorite stop for Wednesday night, and it was a big track, and uh, they liked to hire the uh, pros. And <laughs> we made a lot of races there. And mostly on Wednesday night, but then sometimes I would go there for the, uh, they had a Mopar Nationals, which was really good. That was, you know, outside of the NHRA deal. But the race that I really remember there that really comes to mind was the Spring Nationals was held at Englishtown one year. And uh, I won that race in 1968. And um, 
it was a, <laughs> it was so funny. I, I, the McHugh and I had the whole team was against me, you know, and McHugh and Len loaned his tires to Mulligan for the last race because he had some brand new M and H's, but they didn't realize the kid that was putting the tires on didn't realize that the the bolt holes were a different diameter on the McEwen car versus the Mulligan car. And they didn't take that into consideration. And the kid just bolted the wheels on because it was the right bolt pattern. But now the wheel was loose and not held tight on the rim. And when Mulligan made the burnout, it just shook him something terrible. Then there wasn't nothing they could do about it. And I actually singled on the final. And that was at English town. And then of course, then it was moved from English town to the new Texas track which is, it's gone now too. The second spring nationals went to Texas. Wow. Uh, what about this day? Now this can't be a good memory, but you're still with us. So it's not a terrible memory. This is the moment that is credited with starting the career of Antron Brown. Antron Brown was a young man in the audience watching from the crowd. He saw this and somehow decided, I want to do that. Most of it. Not not this part of it, but the rest of it. I, I got more publicity from that run than I did for winning the world championships. Yeah, exactly. Um, the shot that was definitely. Yeah, Anton what... Brown came over to the trailer with his dad and he said, they call you big daddy. He said, you ain't so big. <laughs> I said, no, they call me big daddy because I won a lot of races. And uh, he just laughed. He was just a kid. Little did I realize he's going to be a champion someday. Yeah. And uh, a team owner and a great representative of the sport of drag racing. He continues to do that. And uh, I just love the fact that your career is connected to his career and to Steve Torrance's career and to Josh Hart's career. These people that have been connected to you off and on over the years and ha are, are carrying the sport now. Does that make you proud? Yes, it does. Um, I, I just love it. Some of these guys, you know, they're just like, like that Richard Hogan, just like one of my sons, you know, he's such a good guy and he's so smart. And, the, and you know, he, he's, he, he's just so unassuming, you know, he, you wouldn't even know you talk to him that, you know, he's just a regular guy and, and, and just a genius. His dad was like that. His dad was really smart and didn't talk much, you know, didn't say much. I well, knew him got, well. He was, they didn't call him King Hogan for nothing down here in Florida. The King. No, I love that. When they call you the King, you're probably pretty good at whatever it is yeah, that you do. Yeah. yeah. So Not the self-proclaimed King, you know, I mean, <laughs> they called him the King. He, he was just Charlie as far as he was concerned, but he was King Hogan. There's no doubt about it. Not only do drag racers get involved in the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame, but broadcasters and announcers who are such a big part of the sport. And honestly, very often the people that I idolize along the way, the Founders Award going to Bob Fry. This is going to be great. Bob is funny, quick witted, entertaining. And now he is going into the Hall of Fame. You worked with Bob Fry for many years. Your impressions of the voice that is Bob Fry. Oh, he's something else. He's so funny. And he, he you know, he was our uh, announcer on the Hall of Fame for years and years. And he he has a funny story every five minutes. And I mean, I don't know where he, how he can come up with him, but he, it's just something, you know, it's he's cool. That's that's what what you can say. You know, cool is a strange deal. You can't buy it and you can't learn it. You either got it or you ain't got it. And Bob Fry is definitely cool. That is a great quote <laughs> right there. I had to follow in the footsteps of Bob Fry twice as an announcer, which was his idea, he came to me knowing he was going to retire and said, Joe, you do a show, you know, the racers, you were a racer. Would you be interested in putting your name in for this? And I said, of course, yes. And then when he really retired, retired, you guys came to me and like Fry always does this. And now I'm going to try to do it. And I have lasted a couple of years. So it, <laughs> it must be going okay. But Bob Fry is always the bar 
to try to achieve? Well, we got to have people that we look up to. I always, as a kid, I always had heroes that I had and, and they were always much better than I was. And I always strive to be like them, you know, and that, that's one thing, you know, we're lacking in our society. We, we need more heroes, more guys that for the kids to look up to. And uh, that's, that's, that's what it takes to keep a society going real strong. Example of a Garlitz hero. Uh, take me back to being a young boy. I'm just interested, like, who did you look up to? Uh, the last time we spoke with you, we learned about your father working for Westinghouse and all the interesting storylines there. But uh, who did you look up to as a little boy? Well, I looked up to my dad to, to start off with. I didn't know any many heroes at that time. You know, of course, the, we always had the movies and uh, and Roy Rogers and uh, Gene Autry, especially Gene Autry, was really a, a childhood hero. And, you know, later in life, uh, when he was 90 years old, I got to do autograph sessions with him. And he was just as nice a guy as he was on the screen. He was a real person. And... Um, yeah, he they made a a, bra, a a pewter thing of him and his horse champion and my swamp rat 30 so that uh richter out in the estes park had that pewter place and uh, he'd have these big charities every year and we'd come out and i got to sit by gene autry and sign autographs with him i really loved him he was a super guy that's a real early hero and then of course chuck yeager was uh is another one of my heroes he because he he rode fast airplanes, you know, they couldn't go fast enough to suit him. And that was the way I felt that they couldn't make the cars fast enough. You know, I was always a big, big fan of speed, you know, in drag racing. Cause when I started drag racing, speed was what was the key. That's how you, that's what told the guy who had the most horsepower, how fast could you go? ET was just a, part of it you know it wasn't we never never played up to the god the et god in the early days it was always speed in fact all of the big money in the early days for top time of the meet it wasn't for who happened to get the first at the end you know get to the end first and you had the whole meet to make that top speed run and so sometimes the guys that got the money made the top speed run right off the bat and and uh, even the NHRA was, it was big on speed. Clear up into the uh, 60s, the late 60s, they would actually still allow you to come back on the track while the eliminations was going on and attempt to get top speed of the meet. I don't, do you remember that, Joe? I know about it. I know about it. And amazing, but it makes sense. That's the entertainment. People want to well, see yeah, a guy. They loved it. They lo and then, of course, the, the show is slowing down at the end of the day. You know, there's just a couple of pairs coming back. So if a couple of the fast cars want to come up and try to get the top speed money, and there was, there was always a money for it or a great big trophy, and they let them do it. And I think there was somebody was hurt at Indianapolis. One of those cars blew up and hurt some spectators, and that was the end of doing i think that's what brought it to an end but i've always been a top speed nut so anybody that went fast like chuck yeager that was one of my heroes of course aj Foyt was one of my heroes and lee petty richard petty's dad that was another hero of mine that i really loved i mean he was a super guy and uh you know that's uh that's awesome they're, they're all gone now just about <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, there are thousands out there that you are their hero. And we have one more inductee I want to talk about. And this is personal for you. And it's personal for me. Uh, the Pat Garlitz Memorial Award. And it's going to Linda Jones. Now, I've worked for Linda and Ted. And I have hung out with Linda. And she is a great person. But she is also a tough leader. And she gets things done, and she's winning this award. Yeah, she, Linda is, um, it's surprisingly, she is definitely the woman behind the man. I mean, very few people know that, you know, she was instrumental in them buying their first drag strip. And she the, always was the chief financial officer of the IHRA and uh, all of their operations. She ran all the money and even into the master's entertainment. 
and nobody knows this. You know, it, she never said nothing about it. And I wouldn't have known it if I hadn't read it when I read the bio on some of her early deals. I mean, she definitely is the woman that knew what was going on and had a lot of influence on some of the early things that happened in drag racing. And uh, very, very, distur uh, very, very uh, good career. And uh, and I like I worked with her too, you know, because she did. She had she had all of the paperwork, you know, when we were doing the shooting. She'd come with me, come to me and say, you know, this is what we're going to shoot today. She had it all written down. And uh, I mean, she definitely, definitely deserves this Pat Garlitz Award because this was what it was all about. This was an award given to a woman that people don't know the influence that they had on drag racing. You know, they, they just don't hear about it. And so we're this is to honor a woman that does that. And Linda Jones is definitely a woman that was behind the scenes doing so much for drag racing that nobody knew anything about. Would, would, can we say that Ted Jones would be nothing without Linda? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. All but right. All right. Ted Jones kidding, would, Ted. would have had a tough row to hoe if he hadn't had Linda at his side. I'll put it that way. That's right. That's right. Just kidding, Ted. I know he's out there somewhere. Someone's definitely going to send it to him. And those are the 2020. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Now, especially. So if he gives me the hook right before the show, you'll know, you'll know why. Now, Don, there's uh, going to be a Garlitz display at the Emily Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals. You're bringing out several of your swamp rats to be a part yeah, they, of the they, they put up a tent and they're going to call it the swamp. And we're, we're going to put the uh, five of our pivotal cars in there cars that changed drag racing forever and uh, we're going to be there and of course i'll have my trailer outside the tent and uh, staying in my little mini motor home so i don't have to fight the traffic and uh, i'll be there every day with my cars and uh, these are some of my favorites uh, and it's going to start right off with that little flathead dragster that i i won the the race in lake city in 1955 and I come back, I was just a member of the club. It's so funny. I, I was the only guy in the club that won anything, and I won top eliminator. And uh, so they had a little tea set for me and the wife uh, commemorating. I, I was just a member. I wasn't an officer or anything like that. The Strokers is what it was called. And, uh, and I'll never forget it. They gave me the little tea set, and the president looked down at me, tall, blonde-headed guy, and he said, I guess you'll retire now. I said, why would I do that? And he said, because you will never beat the Californians. And my wife was sitting in the back of the room and she said, he said the magic words. <laughs> my wife knew me. It, it, when they said you couldn't do it, that's when I did it. Wow. And you did do it. Like that guy yeah. is a perfect example of what not to do. He was on, and he was your club mate. That's shocking. Yeah. <laughs> why would he just? Why would he discourage you? You just won something for them, so that dragster will be there. Well, they were really, they were really kind of jealous of it that, because they all had cars and they were all there. You know, they couldn't even win their class. And for me to take that little ratty-looking swamp rat dragster which wasn't even a swamp rat yet that was just my flathead dragster they wouldn't even put a picture in hot rod magazine from the meet and but later they gave me the centerfold with the car uh, you know getting the trophy and 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 an apology <laughs> for not running a picture of it back in 1955 it's yeah, so well, funny that's what happens. You deal with Big Daddy. You you scorn Big Daddy. You got to apologize. I I I like it. Now I know Josh Hart has got a big thing at his uh, Bernie's, which is down the street from you on Wednesday before the Gator Nationals. Hopefully you're going to be able to swing by that. But uh, yeah, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk about yeah, now. Like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there from six to nine that night. So it's going to be a big big week in Gainesville area, and of course we want people to swing by the museum. What are your hours going to be? around the Gator Nationals for race fans that are coming in from around the country uh, before and after? I, I, you know, they haven't told me. I don't run the museum completely, 
But I think that they, they stay open until probably six o'clock during those days to give people a chance to stop by. And, Excellent. you know, also yeah. I'd like to put a little something here. You know, on Tuesday night, I have to go over to the Daytona for the Motorsports Hall of Fame and give Daryl Gwynn his trophy for being inducted into it. So it's a busy week for me. Wow. Yeah. So let's talk Daryl, who is a personal friend, obviously, of both of us. You used to call him the wolf. For he for him to be inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame, which you guys are always a couple of days apart, just amazing. And you're going to be involved with that. That rivalry, like Florida, was the center of the top fuel universe when you two were battling each other. Oh, yeah, it was a tough one. <laughs> you know, I always have to tell that story of Dallas. You know, we, we were at the Dallas race and and it was the. The, I'd won the semifinal and he won the semifinal. So it was me and him in the final and he had low ET. And it's about two hours while they dried the track. And so finally they called us up there, you know, and um, the, the NHRA guy gave us the signal to start the engines. And we always just delayed just a moment till we heard the other guy's engine come to life. And then we started ours because a lot of times they'd want to hold you and you'd get too hot. So the minute he's that I didn't, I didn't hear my engine turning over and, and um, Herbert leaned into the cockpit and he said, the Gwens are having trouble. What do you want me to do? And uh, I said, Herb, start the effing engine. That's the wolf in the other lane. And Herb started the engine, and I went up and made my burnout. I didn't make a long one, just a just a little burnout, and then backed right up and pulled up to the stage and lights, and uh, and they were and they finally got it started, and, but Glenn didn't get the didn't get he did some kind of a little just a kind of a chirp in the water box, you know, and so he had to get right up to the starting line. It completely rattled him because. Not, not, you know, not only did his engine not start, but now that I'm up there with a staging light turned on, the first lights turned on and he rushed right up there and staged. And of course he stepped on and it just, it didn't do nothing. You know, it was, it was too cold and, uh, I, I won the race and Herb says, it looks like the old man gave the kid a driving lesson and, uh, we won the race and, and of course we won the championship that year too. But uh, I tell you, you couldn't, in drag racing, Joe, you don't cut them any slack. You can't because it's it's one wins and one loses. It's as simple as that. And you don't want to be the loser. Especially in that time when that team was coming on so strong. They were fast. They were quick. The kid is in his 20s and uh, winning everything. Uh, amazing stuff. You guys entertained Florida and NHRA fans around the world with that great rivalry. I can't wait to, uh, that you guys are going over there and he's going to go into that Hall of Fame uh, with you as an inductor. Amazing stuff. Don, thank you very much. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to your fans out there? While we got them on the stream, they're watching on uh, after the fact. Uh, we want them all to be involved. They can't all come. Hopefully many will. It's uh, There's a waiting list to get into the International Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony. It will be streamed. You'll be at Bernie's. You'll be at the Gators. Is there anything else you'd like to put out there before we part ways today? No, just we come, come visit us at the museum. Well, we've got a lot of things that have been changed around. We got just got our brand new John Force car. We've, we've had a body for years, but we got a complete modern car now and it's on display and we just love it. We think there's so much there to see and um, gosh, it's going to be exciting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look forward to seeing everybody at Gainesville. Get your tickets early. It's going to be sold out. I guarantee you. And uh, this this is uh, drag racing is going to be something else in 2023. And uh, I'm so happy to be a part of it. And Joe, we appreciate you and appreciate you helping us with the Hall of Fame, the uh, taking care of the master ceremonies. You do a really great job and uh, you, you're fine. 
Don't worry. Don't worry about Bob Fry. <laughs> the guy is an amazing anyway. talent. He's he's got a quick wit. He's so funny. Uh, and I just I try to keep the train on the tracks, as you saw last year. I try to keep the train on the tracks. You do a great job, and we love you. Everybody, you. everybody, come out, and it's going to be one heck of a march. It's going to be great. All right, Don, have a great day. Thank you for spending time with us. Thank you. Oh, one go. last thing. Yes. I'm going to be driving a Hellcat at the Gator Nationals. What? Explain. Yeah, they, they're going to have me test the Hellcat. I'm going to make a run in a Hellcat on Saturday night before Top Fuel. Nice. And one on one run on Thursday morning, just a last run. I'll be there for that. I forgot Way to mention to that. <laughs> Very important. Garlet's back on track at the Gator Nationals. I love it. Thank you for remembering. Don, be well. Thank you so much. See you later, Joe. Have a great there day. You. you too. There he goes, folks. Big Daddy Don Garlet's on WFO Radio. Oh, my goodness. If you want to go to the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony, you can call Chuck at the museum. There is a waiting list. There is a waiting list, but the list exists, and so maybe you can get in. WFO Radio will have a table there, and we are giving away two seats. That's right, two. You got to keep watching the show. Keep sharing the show, and we will tell you exactly how to go to the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame on us. Now, you, you, we pay for your own travel. You get there yourself. We'll give you tickets in the door. And that's it. You can sit at our table. How cool is that? How great was Garlitz? We had a little internet snafu at the very beginning, but my goodness, man, it's just tremendous. And I was not putting the comments up on the comments, uh, guys, just because um, I was worried about the internet. But we were able to get it in. We were able to get it in. Now, I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what everybody has to say. I want to see what you put up there in the chat section about Garlitz, about the inductees. But before I do that, you may have noticed we jumped right into the interview with Big. I want to tell you about the people who make it possible for me to do this show. Been doing this show for over 10 years. Been working with the NHRA track announcing team for over 10 years and getting opportunities like this one to hang with Garlitz and MC the Hall of Fame. It's been amazing. Who keeps me on the air? You might not need them right now, but when you do, please think about the service they provide by sponsoring WFO Radio, like Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology, Matt Hartford, Keith Jones, Lake Speed. These guys have advanced the technology for ring seal in high performance racing engines from stock eliminator to street cars to Formula One cars dramatically. Speaking of innovators. So the next time you need piston rings, call Total Seal. Make them your first call, not your last call. FTI performance transmissions and torque converters. These guys are huge. They're in DeLand, Florida, right near Garlitz. They do automatic transmissions and torque converters for .90 racers, big money bracket racers, but also cars that make huge power like Pro Modified, Top Sportsman, Top Dragster, even a lot of the street cars that you see running the Drag and Drive events at Sick Week, say, are using FTI performance transmissions and torque converters. The next time you're in the market or you want to upgrade, give them a call. Foggett, Gary Stinnett, recognizes a problem as an engine builder. He's tearing them apart. He finds surface rust inside the cylinder walls. And he invents this product, Fog It. It's like a $20 can available on the net. And you can protect the inside of your high-performance racing engine very well against corrosion and rust. It also works on firearms and machine tools and anything where you're trying to avoid surface rust. Bernie's.com. We already know Garlitz is going to be there. From six to nine, it's on his, he's going to be working at the Hall of Fame in Daytona on Tuesday. At Wednesday, he's going to be at Bernie's with me and with Josh Hart and everybody else. They're putting together a collection of former Gator Nationals winners. You should be there at Bernie's open house. Let's all hang out together. It's going to be a wild, raucous party. Not quite Project X level, but it's all an exercise to show everybody out there that muscle cars, if you want to buy one, if you want to sell one, if you want a frame off restoration, Bernie's.com is where to go. Go to Bernie's Speed Shop. There's also Phillips Connect for the truckers out there. Not the truckers necessarily, but the transportation industry folks. 
with many trucks going out over the road. Phillips-Connect.com, smart trailer technology, enables the racers and the people who are out there to keep track of what's going on with their vehicle, whether it be if you have a light out, uh, load detection, uh, brake sensors, all of these things are part of Phillips Connect smart trailer technology. And so I think it would be great if you were to check it out. And you can always reach out to me, Joe, at WFORadio.com. Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, the Dragster Adventure, also located in Gainesville. Do I have any sponsors that aren't in Florida? My goodness. Well, they know me best. FrankHawley.com, your chance to follow in the footsteps of Don Garlitz and drive a dragster. Big Daddy drives a dragster. I drive a dragster. It's almost like we're the same. FrankHawley.com. For a nominal fee, you get an experience of a lifetime. They do corporate events. They set up for sales teams. They can even set up a rate. Marvin Rodak, Rodak's Coffee and Grills.com. For those of you that love coffee, that's the one straight above my head right there. Marvin Rodak, R O D A K S, Coffee and Grills.com. Hit the website, 817 924 6821. The best in the business. If you like coffee or barbecue, the best in the business. And then, of course, Samtech.edu, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. They are helping the next generation of race car innovators learn their trade, machinists, engine block programs, CNC programs, motorsport, EFI tuning. Go to samtech.edu, but just call them and yell for Brian Massengill. He's the guy. Costello is telling me about you, Brian Massengill. Pick up the phone. And that's what we got. All right. Comments in the comment section, guys. This is the payoff. Your thoughts on Garlitz. This guy. Talking about John Force going into the hall. What is that going to be like? Bruce says Don's the man. Clearly, Don is the man. 91 years old. I had a great conversation with him yesterday about Ed Iskandarian, which Jason Galvin and I got to hang out with Ed in the Cooner Wire suite. Thanks, Pat, from Cooner Wire for and Donovan, who never, never remembers my name, Donovan. That's okay. I, it doesn't matter as long as I get to hang out in the suite with Ed Iskandarian. Come on now. But to be able to think that Garlitz looks up to Ed Iskandarian and Ed has got 10 years on Garlitz and Garlitz is 91, that's amazing. That is amazing. Jerry Stewart says, great show. Of course, guys, you can always help us by sharing this. Sharing. The link, social, share. Everybody loves Don. Everybody loves Don. Leah's got tickets. She's going already. We'll see her at the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame. Leon says, did you read In the Night Sky yet? Don, don't miss it. I'm sorry I didn't put up these questions, these comments for Don. We could do that another show. I wanted to keep the train on the tracks on this one. But I can share with you a personal thing that Don told me yesterday. And this is uh, very, very current, right? Everyone knows about the balloons that are flying over. And Don laughed. And Don's got a, you know, he's interested in uh, other worlds and other lives and all that stuff, just like I am very much so. So every time I get a chance to talk about it and he goes, well, you can bet that they're not alien because if they were, we wouldn't be shooting at them. And I had to laugh because that is the very, very basic logic that I can follow easily. Yeah, if it was an alien craft, we probably shouldn't shoot at it because if they got here, they could probably do something pretty bad to us. The story about the wolf cutthroat, no slack. John force has a story about that. John believed the lie and got beat. John shared that story on WFO a couple of years ago where they said, don't worry, kid, we're not going to make the run. You got it. We're broke. We're just going to pull up there. And then they did the burnout on him and they beat him. And he learned right there to never trust another drag racer. Now, I will say this. Last year in Brainerd, when Ron Douglas was in the water box and they were going to run Tony Schumacher and Tony Schumacher was having electrical system problems back there in the pits. And Ron Douglas said, wait, we're not going to go until they're up here. And then they came up here. That is an act of sportsmanship. And I think it's an example of how our sport has evolved evolved from what it was then, which was, you know, knives out, cutthroat, everybody's your enemy to this is a show and the fans out there are the ones that are want to see a race and let's wait a couple minutes, even 
if it's to our own detriment, which in that case it was for Ron Douglas and Josh Hart. They blew off the tires. Tony Schumacher won the round. But in the greater context, I think that people were appreciative of what Ron did. And I think it just shows time is, is different. Things are a little different now. Always great to hear stories from the legend, says Monica. Jeff says, Don, what an incredible journey, of course. Through all Gainesville race days. Well, the idea that he's going to be running a Hellcat, I don't even know if that's public. And if it's not public and NHRA was getting ready to drop a press release. Sorry. Sorry. Oops. But there's going to be all those. Uh, all those. Swamp rats out there. Tell Big I'm still running those little wheels he likes so much. I'm sorry, Chris. I should have told him. I was running them too. Garrettson was running my little wheels for my dragster back in the day. Way to go, Chris. We're connected forever. We're connected forever. This guy's out. I'm about to be out. Big Daddy and Joe. Pure, pure coolness. Well, what he said about Bob Fry was pure coolness. Fry is cool. You can't quantify it. You can't buy it. You can't make it. You just are or you're not like snake. Like, how do you be like Don the snake? You can't. Bob Fry is cool in a different way. Like when I tell Bob that's, that uh, Don said he's cool, I will he agree? He'll probably not. He'll probably have some sort of self-deprecating, quick-witted humor. But the guy did call a wrestling match with Gorilla Monsoon. And so that's pretty cool. I am super excited. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Quick one, WFO. Erica Enders. Champion interview in our archive. Brittany Force, champion interview in our archive. Ron Caps, champion interview in our archive. Super excited for all of it. I will be at the Gator Nationals. We'll be at the Hall of Fame. Keep listening. Keep watching. We will send one lucky person plus one to the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It is going to be great. Thanks to Chuck. Thanks to Big. Thanks to everybody behind the scenes. Thanks to the internet gods keeping us on the air. My goodness. Russ loves Big Daddy. I will win a race this year so I can get another interview. You better, Russ. You better. Yeah, we've got the attention of the pit shows up there. Russ was a feature on NHRA's attention in the pits on their YouTube channel. You should go check it out. Oh, no. Anyway, that's it. Thanks to Garlitz. Thanks to all of you. I greatly appreciate it. Remember, WFO Radio has a free mobile application for your iPhone or Android. Just search WFO Radio. And all of our channels everywhere. We're going to have a great season. Super excited and positive for whatever is about to happen. Got Saturday racing now. So many cool things. Don't forget the WFO store is up and running. You can get your merch, shirts, and gear. And on Friday, my own race car. We're going to take a big step. I'll share that with you on my own social media. Project Pontiac moves forward. But right now, it's all about Big Daddy. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Chuck. And congratulations to all of the inductees to the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame. WFO, guys.